Welcome to the Hank Cisco Show. Ladies and gentlemen, don't touch that remote. Got a great show here. And I just want to mention a couple of things before I open the show and introduce my guest. Uh, this will be my first show, starting with 28 straight years of doing this show. And um, the first time I ever had this show was uh, there was a visiting police officer from Japan. Japan, And... Uh, and it was on Pearl Harbor Day, so I called, uh, at that time, uh, the director here was Tony Coyle. I said, I have a police officer from Japan, you know, Pearl Harbor Day, and he says, bring him up here. Well, you know, so I brought him up to the studio. When he got to the studio, uh, there's nobody here to interview him, so he said, you interview him. So I wind up interviewing him, and that started my Hank Sisko show for 20 straight Eight, 28 years. So here I am on September the 14th, 2016, bobbing and weaving. And also, when I was with the Northtown Police, the beginning of the school, I would always get the children to make sure that we have safe getting across the street and all. And we used to sing the song, never cross when the light is red, the light is red, the light. So school's open, first day. All right, so my guest today is David, you tell me your last name, Wayne, 180 some pounds, wearing <laughs> white shirt from where? Montgomery tell me who you are and what you do. David Sorry. Ridding is my name and I'm with the uh, Montgomery County chapter of the Pennsylvania Sports Hall of Fame. And I'm the president of the organization and uh, this year will be our sixth annual banquet. Six. Sixth annual, we skipped last year as our chapter was host of the state induction uh, banquet. So, all right, now, it's, it's, what do you do? Well, what we do is we honor deserving people, uh, athletes, uh, contributors to the sports world, um, whether it's coaching, athlete himself, uh, uh, media, you know, any people that, anybody that contributes and, and, and brings uh, the, the county Of honor. all different sports. All huh? sports, we cover all sports. Men and women, doesn't matter. Oh, yeah? Um, you know, we, we have uh, people that are just writers, sports writers that are oh, inducted. Yeah, matter of fact, we have one this year that's well, a, you, you know, know. The sports writers, sometimes, uh, I'm a former boxer, and I remember at ringside, some of the boxers, the blood would splash, you know, and uh, they were covered with blood. So yeah, I'd say that uh, they had to be honored, too, <laughs> coming on the way. Yeah. So what do you have in the front burner right now? Well, uh, on the September 30th, this year, September this coming, 30th this year, right? Coming up this September 30th, uh, we'll be hosting the sixth annual induction banquet at the Valley Forge uh, Casino Resort, uh, in the Radisson in the hotel here. Actually, in, it's in the old uh, Louis Lang Street Theater yeah, where we have yeah. the uh, banquet. It's a great oh, venue yeah, for- Yeah, be a and, big crowd? Yes, what yeah, we're, we're expecting about 300. Wow, okay, now, this is, this is the uh, flyer that you have, all right. Now, I see my name in there someplace. <laughs> yes, yes. So tell me who some of the people are and what they do. Okay, well, obviously yourself, Hank, and congratulations on this uh, honor. Thank you for... We're, uh, we're very you know, pleased. When you're 92 years old and somebody wants to honor you, it's a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a blessing, believe me. Go ahead. So, of course, yourself. Um, we have a Chad Levitt from Cheltenham, who was a three sports star. Uh, back in his day, he played in the NFL. Uh, he was on the uh, 99. Uh, What's his name? Chad Levitt. Okay. Chad Levitt. Chad was on the 99 uh, Rams team that won the Super Bowl with Dick Vermeil. Oh, yeah. So, you Dick Vermeil, do you think he'll be there? No, but he's uh, he's done a lot to sponsor and support Chad. Yeah. Yeah, he, he's a good guy. Yeah, there was a rumor that he was going to make come. He was going to try to make it. Uh, he just informed us recently that he, he just can't. Yeah. I think he's going to the West Coast out to his uh, vineyard. Yeah, <laughs> well, he was, he was going to be on my show, uh, uh, what, last year or so, but uh, uh, I had him booked for, to come on the show, and uh, three days before, I, I had to get a heart operation, so... He never made it, but uh, he told me that he would come back sometime oh, when yeah. I got a date. Uh, great guy, great oh, guy. Yeah, I mean, yeah, wonderful guy. Just this yeah. time of year, because, you know, he has his own wine now. Yeah. And I, I think he's out in California. There's vineyards yeah. out there yeah. making sure everything's going good and then all that stuff. So he does some traveling out there quite from a bit. the grapes comes the wine, from the wine comes the love song forever. <laughs> right? John. 
Cook right. Yeah. He's my uh, right hand man, and he's going to be singing on my show. Oh, you know. right, cool. So go ahead. Uh, yeah. In addition, we have Lewis Scott, who was a quite a, an athlete. As a matter of fact, he'll be joining his brother uh, Claire's nickname Scotty Scott, uh, who was inducted was that, in, in our TV announcer or something. 2014. No. Oh. No. But that's we do have a, another Scott though. We have oh, Scott okay. Palmer. Scott Palmer, who was a TV announcer. Oh, okay. With uh, I think Channel Six for quite a while. Yeah. I think he's with the Phillies right now. So you know things like that. But it's Scott be was, there. you know, it's, it's in everybody's home for years and years doing their sports and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, uh, Demir Halloran, she actually uh, owns and runs the uh, Fairmount uh, Racket Club, the Squash Club, on the uh, in, in King of Prussia. And her credentials are off the chart as far as a squash player. She's won national, collegiate, national, and world titles. Wow. You know, so it's her first uh, inductee of a, of a squash player. So we honor all yeah, sports. Never, yeah, <laughs> squash. The only so, squash you know, I know, you've got squash with spaghetti. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's the only thing I can say. Right? Right? Right, John? Joe. Joe, keep changing his name, right? My man. <laughs> Go ahead, Joe. We have uh, Tom Long again, uh, great coach. Uh, basketball coach, man, cool. Tom Longergan. Uh, what, what school? He, he's at, uh, I believe he's at uh, Gwinnett Mercy right now. Okay. But he's been to McDevitt all over. He's uh -huh. got incredible record as far as uh, the tight number of titles and just a, a, a long coaching career. Very. Uh, and he'll deserving. be there too. He'll be there. Uh, of course, yourself, Scott Palmer, I mentioned, uh, Bobby Baker. Who was a, a football player up at the Upper Merritt High School back in the day when they won some titles there? They had a good uh, tandem. He was the receiver. Uh, we have Sal Bello Sr., who is going in as our unsung Are hero. Are they brothers or something? Or cousins? Are they brothers, the two be Bellows? You have two Bellows there? No, they're not related. Oh, no? No, we're not re they're not related. But the one is uh, involved with the, the Pepper's Restaurant. That is correct. Is that senior? That's senior. Okay. Yes, yes. His, son, getting clamps off. his son Junior is an attorney. Huh? His, his son Junior, Sal Bello Junior, is an attorney. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's right. Yeah. Good yeah. guy. He's he's heavily involved in sports. His son, as a matter of fact, is playing. Uh, I think it's our science. He just set some records with all last yeah. year as a quarterback there. So you know the Bello family has always been his entrenched. Son. Yeah. And uh, Sal Bello himself was a heck of an athlete growing up, but you know the unsung hero portion comes. He's done so much to contribute. He's probably sponsored, I don't know, tens of thousands of teams throughout his, yeah, his life. Right. I mean, he's very, very that's, instrumental. That's great that you can honor these he, people. He started the know. Bridgeport uh, Flag Football League and yeah. things like that, the Senior League and things like that. Well, they, now, people can come to that, right? And they, oh, can buy, they can buy a ticket there or they can, well, who can they, con go ahead, continue on, who else? Well, make, uh, real, uh, Joe Bello is deceased. He's not related to Sal, but he's yeah. deceased. Uh, he died very young. He was a Bishop Kennedy football player at the University of Delaware. Yeah. Had a great career, promising yeah, NFL country career. Hawking, country hockey guy, I think, the fellows, no? In that area, yeah, you know, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, so him, and then uh, uh, Gene Calder, Eugene Calder, who was He was Morris in high school. Yes. He was a buzz boy. Great basketball player, oh, right. from what I understand. Yeah, it's yeah, great. Again, before my time. <laughs> oh, I yeah. remember that. I, I don't think I was on the police department then when the Buzz Boys were win for the state championship. Yeah, yeah. so Joe, Joe yeah. uh, Bello and Gene are deceased yeah. uh, members that are going in. That is great. Yeah. So there's 10, ten every year we put in 10. 10. 10 people yeah. that we try to get in. and. Uh, we you know, there's a, there's a girl that uh, helped, uh, came to my house, was uh, a volunteer, and uh, she played basketball for uh, some college, local college, and I forget. She was all state and all. And I said, you know, I said, I'm going to put your name in, but I forgot her name. So I had to <laughs> check her out and see she, she won some awards and she was a state, uh, all state championship or something, you know. Yeah. So, well, that's what you look for, Hank. Yeah, I mean, you yeah, obviously I like look for the, people yeah. that contribute, you know, the athletes themselves. You know, it, it's, it's easy to recognize the people that make the headlines that are in the paper, the right. news all the time. Right, right. But it's, you know, it's the guys in the background that every now and again that support all that goes on. Right. You know, we try to recognize them as well. Yeah. You know, if it's all about sports, and uh, I'm sure that there's going to be sports stories. Oh, sure. <laughs> well, what is it? Does everybody have an opportunity to talk? Yeah, each, each, uh, each one of the ten inductees 
And or the representative. You know, I'm a big talker. Well, you only get five minutes. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you should be able to get it all in in oh, five no, minutes. No, I, I, okay. uh, it, and it's a great Maybe. event. Maybe. We have it. It's actually covered by uh, UMGA TV. Yeah, they got a hook and. and no, hook. we have a band. The music, like they do on TV. They start with the drums or some keyboards or something and uh, let you know that, hey, wind it down. You know, you've seen it that minute. You know? Well, yeah. That's something you have to do. Uh, unfortunately, it's the fair way to do it, but especially, as you oh, know, yeah. when you're scripting, you know, sure. you're on you TV as along, well, you, know? you want it to keep it uh, fairly short. Right, and, you know, right. And plus, everything's in the, in the program book. Everybody gets a program book and all that, so their bio, oh. pictures and bios are all there. Yeah. So that everybody can read their achievements and, yeah. and basically, you know, they're just acknowledging most of the time that, you know, no, people that are very instrumental in their lives besides right. their families and things so, like that. Now that's uh, at, the, at the Valley Forge Casino and that's on September the 30th. 30th right. Correct. Now, uh, to make, they want to buy tickets, they want to put an ad in a book and or you buy a table or so. So you got a website? Yes, too. we do. Now the website's just macosportshof.org and you'll see a tab that says that 2016 induction banquet. You click on that and you can go down, you can purchase tickets. Uh, pay for ads and, and yeah. things like that, and there's a couple forms that you can print out if you want to mail it in and all that. Yeah, well, you know, you tell a little sports story because my background was boxing, and uh, when I went to uh, New York and I had uh, top manager and trainer was Charlie Golden, who had uh, handled uh, Rocky Marciano, and uh, he told me one time, he says, that one fighter come in, he says, uh, went in the gym, and he says, uh, after he worked out a little bit, he says to Charlie Goldman, who was trainer for Rocky Marciano, he says, oh, I, no, he says I, I want to get a rub down. And Charlie says, young fella, he says, a good fighter don't need a rub down, and a lousy fighter don't deserve one. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he got, uh, that was it. And then I remember a story that uh, um, Newt Rockley, mentioned. They asked him in an interview one time, Newt, what do you look for in a football player? Do you look for, for somebody that can pass good? Can you look for somebody that can tackle good? He says, I look for the guy that has the desire to play. If he don't have the desire, he's not going to be a good player. See? And that goes across the board anything. Right. So we all know that conditioning is so important in sports. Now, whatever sport it is, you got to get in condition. So it reminds me of the story of a priest and a rabbi sitting at ringside. <laughs> and uh, the one fighter was in the corner, the fight's ready to start, and, the, and this fighter's blessing himself. And the rabbi says uh, to the priest, Father, is that going to help him any? He says, it ain't going to help him much if he ain't not in condition, you know? <laughs> so. Prepare yourself, you know, don't don't rely on uh, on prayers. Say your prayers in the dressing room, get in good shape, and then go out and uh, participate in sports. Yeah, today they don't have an excuse. There's so much technology that we didn't have growing up. You uh, and I didn't have that kind of luxury, you know. Like, the only thing I had for aches and pains was an Epsom salt bath back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> Did you play any kind of sports? Yeah, you? I was actually a baseball player. I was shot with Cincinnati, and I tore my shoulder up. And Who? Cincinnati Reds. Oh, yeah? I tore my shoulder off. What and, uh, position? Shortstop. Shortstop. Well, uh, you know, I had, uh, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, Bobby Wine. Bobby Wine. Yeah, I know yeah. Bobby. Yeah, he was, he was good, yeah. 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 What was he played? Third base or shortstop? Yeah, he was a shortstop. Yeah, Bobby then, Wine played short. Yeah, and then he became a coach for, uh, a manager for uh, Atlanta, I think, or somebody. A couple, and... Uh, well, his son was a good ball player too, and he was a coach. As a matter of fact, he's he's a member. You're going to be joining him in the Hall of Fame. He's a member of our chapter. Oh yeah. You mentioned boxing. We got yeah, Joe Frazier. Yeah. We got Joe Frazier in. Yeah. And then you know, in Joe's case, um, you know, a handful of guys. Most of the time. Was Joe alive then when you honored him? Yes. Joe Frazier. Yes, we actually honored him. It was 40 days before he passed. Oh. As a matter of fact, it was that day of the banquet. Uh, we weren't even sure if he's going to make it. Uh, his because he had to go see had some tests done at the hospital and his you know his manager wasn't sure he's going to be able to you know, what was going to happen so yeah. they, they might have put him in we didn't know so uh, of course when Joe's finally about one o'clock that afternoon we were told that he would definitely make it yeah. or not but Joe it was 40 days before it was actually that day all the tests that he took with the diagnosis oh, of the cancer yeah, and all that guy. Yeah, I, they took him yeah I, I refereed his uh, second second pro fight 
and not the guy out by the name of Stables, uh, from, I think it was from Reading. Well, he was on a heavy set guy, you know, and uh, the bell rings, and uh, uh, Joe Frazier comes out and he's swinging, boom, 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 you know. Beat him up pretty good. Second round, boom, 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 boom. Eh, knocked him down, get up, boom. That was before they had the three count, the three, three, three knockdowns, yeah. and then you stop the yeah, fight. Yeah, old rule, yeah. Well, so I stopped the fight. Well, Philadelphia fans are funny, you know. <laughs> they start booing. He's, oh, he's taking the tank, he's a tank and all. I said, this guy can hit with both hands. I said, he's going to be a champ someday, you know. And uh, so and then another time I was refereeing the fight to fill up the arena. And, uh, and there was a big roar in the crowd. And all of a sudden, there was the two fighters were ready to fight. They zinc off the voice of the 76ers. Sure. He had the mic. And in jumps Muhammad Ali, you know. <laughs> that was before the Fraser fight. And Yank Durham, his trainer, was there in, in the ring. And he's how uh, Muhammad saying, I'm the greatest, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna whip Joe Fraser. And he was calling him other kinds of names, you know. Sure. So he took the mic away from the zinc. So uh, what's his name? Uh, Zach uh, there was a commissioner, says, Hank, get that mic away from him. So I, I'm in the ring. I, I grab him, you know, I got his body arm, I'm pulling you. So Finally, he, he released it, you know, and uh, he was, uh, the Yank Dorm was saying, yeah, he said, well, we'll see you. It was, I think it was the battle in the uh, Philippines or Hawaii. Oh, something Rilla like Manila? Yeah, 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 <laughs> right. So I have a picture of, uh, of, of me throwing him out, grabbing him by the arm, and I blew it up, and it's, I'm going to have it when they, on the, at the lobby, when you, or, or at the entrance of your uh, the banquet. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And I got a big pair of boxing gloves too, about that big. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna have them there too. So, okay. so yeah. So I'm I'm looking forward to that evening. Yeah, it's and a special it's a special night. It really is. We right. you know, we go all out to make it uh, you know deservingly you know uh, an honor. Uh, we you know like I said it's an optional black tie affair. Yeah. Uh, I know all the our board gets dressed up in tuxedos oh, and whatnot. Yeah. Well, I don't know tuxedo with me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, my board actually. I'll come in with my boxing trunks. <laughs> my <laughs> board actually had a rough time with it when we first initiated six, seven years ago. And uh, every one of them that ended up wearing a tuxedo, yeah, well, I, they said, you know what, it's the best thing that we did. It really, you know, and, and it's a good thing because we want it to be a classy event. Right. So, all right, now tell me something about you. What? You were a baseball player. Tell me well, something I played, about you. I played, what you do? I played, that? Well, aside from this, I'm, I'm basically uh, semi-retired right now. Um, I, I run the uh, Montgomery County chapter. I founded that uh, about seven years ago. And um, I'm also now the executive director at the state level. Oh. And the, so that, you know, we're, we're doing some things there. Uh, one of the things in the state, which after this year, we'll have 696 inductees wow. total from 1962 when it was founded. Actually, the first year it was 60, uh, 63, and that was Chuck Ben Merrick, uh, Tri Painter, uh, Trader, um, so I had Stan Musial. You know, it was just a who's yeah. who. Uh, Jim Thorpe. You know, it was just a huge who's yeah. who in sports. And it all, you know, since then, this will be the 54th year for that. So the project on, 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 on the table for that is actually to get a mobile museum as opposed to a building. What? So Why that's find me again? Why? A mobile museum. Like a big trailer? Big tractor trailer. That's a good idea. Well, it makes sense. Uh, there's been a couple of failed attempts. It was going to be out in Harrisburg in the early 90s. They had the funding. Everything was going to have to build, a build, build it on the, one of the islands out there. Uh, unfortunately, it fell through just... Uh, political nonsense and all that, and it yeah. fell through. And when we start doing some you know, investigations and studies, uh, museums are very, very hard to maintain, you mm -hmm. know, and you have to constantly promote to get people to come to see you and all that. Right. And um, so a few years ago, I, I had seen where the trend was that they were doing mobile museums. So of course, they take these tractor trailers, yeah, they, you know, yeah. they open up twice as wide, they, right. you know, they all this kind of too. stuff, they do yeah. all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, so it just so happened that New Jersey, in 2013, rolled out their mobile museum. Now they have a combined, it's not a, it's not a sports museum, they have a combined. Oh. 
So you have Albert Einstein in it, you have Frank Sinatra in it, and anybody in between oh, athletes okay. as well. Bon Jovi's in it, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, and they're doing extremely well with it, and they've been very, very helpful for us, you know, because, I mean, this is all new to us, so, right. you know, we're trying to get that off the ground. And uh, that's a, a huge undertaking to start from scratch, you know, and go through that and put yeah. that whole project together. But that's the uh, main thrust of what we're trying to do there. Well, that's a great idea. <coughs> you know, I, I think you get some support on that. You well, know. we're hoping we're hoping to get a, a good, strong sponsor. You know, there's some great uh, companies in Pennsylvania, obviously. Yeah. You know, and we're looking for that partner that has the same kind of um, mission as, as we do. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. and there's some foundation. The word mission. Yes, right. and there's a foundation, several foundations out there that we we've identified that we hope, you know, will look our way yeah. and support us. Uh, because mainly what Jersey's been successful in, and and this is what we had discussed before even. Uh, thinking about this, uh, was it's the educational value, going to the schools. Oh, yeah. And one of, our, good, one of the too, things yeah. that we want to do is get these sponsors that can, you know, help pay the cost and bring it to the school. Oh. And, they, you know, and all that kind of stuff. The guys that sell football shoes, <laughs> football helmets, uh, you know. Well, anything. You, you got Wawa, you got Pico, you got, yeah, yeah. You got all these, you know, Penta, you Hershey, you know, there's, there's yeah, lots and a, lots of. Well, get, these, uh, get a race car. And then they'll they'll give they'll build you a big thing. Well, we're <laughs> put a race Roger car Pesky's one of our inductees, and uh, yeah. Roger has the trucking business, so you know things like that. But you know, that's just part of what we're doing. And the reason being is because again, it's so it'd be so much nicer to have this van, this big truck on the road, advertising. Uh, number one, number two, we can go to all the schools, we can go to the sports venues on both sides of the state, all the colleges. But you know that would be good. Like there's a, like a big football game, park it there, so people can come to the museum before they go in and see the ball game. Sure. Get a baseball game, a football game, a boxing bout. You, you know? name it. You name it. It can be there. Yeah. You know. So that's you know that's that's what idea. our mission is going to be going forward. You know, we're still doing the honoring and obviously like that. But you, you need you, you need to enshrine and have a hall to display these people. Right. You right. know. I mean, you're you're talking the the cream of the crop that makes it to the state. Right. Uh, level and uh, I think you know I, I think every every uh, boy and girl today should participate in some kind of sport you know oh, okay. because it, it, it's a good learning thing you know I think uh, my boxing it, it helped me a lot through my 24 years with the police department boxing amateur whatever and I was I entered uh, the, the boxing tournament the Philadelphia Daily News boxing tournament sure. And I only had like six amateur fights. I shouldn't even been in there because I opened. The other guys had 20, 30 fights. So I, I entered. So my brother, my brother was in my corner. Yeah. Or he was training me for the fight. So I went there and I knocked the guy out in the first show. The next night, you know, I won another decision. It was a three night show. Okay. So finally, I drew a bye and I had a watch and I won this guy. Well, even though it pow, 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 boom, knocked the guy out. And I had to fight him the next day. <laughs> so I told my brother, no way. I says, Joe, look, I know that guy can beat me. I don't want to go. I ain't going to show up. No. He says, look, you train for that fight, and you're going to go in there, and you're going to fight, and you're not going to lose this fight in the dressing room. If you win or lose, you're going to be in the ring. Okay? Okay. So I been there. So here it is. Fill up your read. All my friends, I was working at the shipyard. Sun ship, all the gang at ringside, go! And here I am looking at this guy, you know. I says, all right, my brother told me, don't lose a fight there. And the next thing you know, the bell rings. This guy comes out. He was so overconfident. And my brother just said, just stick and jab, move, stick and jab. Don't worry about hitting him, just stick. Boom. First round, he's missing, swinging. I said, now I now start, boom. Next thing you know, boom, boom, foul, boom, foul, boom. <laughs> I beat the guy. From then on, I says, from now on, even though I have in my mind I'm going to lose, I'm going to go. And it helped me through life. And I think sports gives a kid that zip to want a, a challenge. Oh, sure. There's, there's, there's no question. I mean, it's been proven over and over scientifically, medically, you know, the advantage of sports as far as just your health, health reasons, you know, conditioning and all that kind of stuff. Well, they teach you to eat right, nutrition-wise, values and all that. Teamwork. Your teamwork, your, compa your uh, sportsmanship, you know, right. learn how to win and, and be a gracious winner and loser. Right. You know, right. like you said, I mean, uh, 
Mainly, though, you find that the uh, kids that succeed are, are the kids who really get that desire. They get that yeah. quenchable yeah. thirst, that yeah. desire that, that they want to get that better. That desire better. to win. And like you said, that carries yeah. through the life. If two, if two sh opponents both have the same ability to fight and everything, one wins because he had the desire, more desire to win. The other guy was like, uh, you know, it's just like you say, like Rocky Marciano and Muhammad Ali. Who was the greatest? They were two different style fighters. Exactly. It's Rocky Marciano years. was a uh, aggressive fighter going in, and whereas Muhammad was a defensive. He right. was counter puncher, boom, boom, you know. And the other guy was in. So you really, there, you can't say this is one's better than the other. You can say he's better as a puncher. He's better as a boxer. Okay? <laughs> That's exactly what I told Joe about the Ali three Ali fights. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I said, Joe, you're the puncher. He was the boxer. Okay. Unfortunately, it's boxing. He, I got to give him two out of the three. He said, you yeah. think so? We yeah. were just good friends. Now, he's just a great guy, yeah, Joe. Yeah. yeah, Joe. It's funny, Joe you said, it's funny you said that because I had that conversation with him. Yeah. Boxer versus puncher. There's no, no doubt you're the better puncher. Yeah. He was the better boxer. You think so? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he's, uh, anytime I would call him for uh, a fundraiser or something to make an appearance, he never, if he could make it, you know, that's because he was yeah. tied up. But uh, he was good, 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 good guy, you know. So, all right, what else? What else you got cooking? Well, I mean, this is this is our main focus, obviously, the September 30th banquet. That's that's going on right oh, now. That you know, it's only a uh, little more than two weeks away. So today's the 14th. There's 30 or 16 days. So, <laughs> so, you know, that's our main focus right now. Um, the state, it's going to take some time to do that. Yeah. Well, you got 30 seconds now, and, and it's September. September 30th, 30th at the Valley Forge Casino Resort uh, in the Radisson Building. Anybody that's going to go, go to the Radisson Building, the main right. entrance of the hotel, not to the casino what, itself. What time? It'll start 6 o'clock. All right. Uh, well, now, who, how we make you contact? Who? Contact myself, Dave Ridding, uh, and uh, phone, either call number. Me, phone number. You can call me at 610-256-0300, or you can go to the website, which is moncosportshof.org. Okay. Find the banquet tab and everything you need is right there. David, thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for allowing us to come into your uh, living room, kitchen, wherever you are. And uh, I'm so happy that I'm still around 92 and doing these shows. And uh, we have a, a lot of young, new students behind the cameras now. And uh, I brought some uh, Philadelphia pretzels, and next time I come, I'm going to bring a little pizza. And uh, I want to thank uh, John Doyle for allowing me to continue doing my show here. And uh, I will be interviewing some doctors, lawyers, the district attorney, Steele. I'm, I'm all lined up. So remember, my show is on Comcast 28, Verizon 45. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, okay? And may God bless each and every one of you. May, adios. David, grazie. Thank Keep you. bobbing and weaving. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. All right, I, got, I forgot. I didn't even use